Hello everyone, Alzion the Great here. Welcome back to League of Legends Manager on MOBA GM with SI Gaming. It has been rough sledding for SI. Still, we've only made the playoffs once. We did slightly better than we did, you know, in twenty or in a uh, season before. But last year was not super fun for SIG. Only going eight and four, having you know the the issue in the jungle again between Shaba and this time Dilgod who took over. We've decided to finally move on from Dennis Shaba Brown, whose new home is on the Imperium Aces, along with former SIG player Aqua Monsoon. And we'll see how the team does this year. In the offseason, we added uh, star support Shinku. We also added longtime veteran top laner Jester. And we promoted Dilgod, despite not impressing too much last year, only a 1.6 KDA in seven games. Despite not impressing last year, we don't exactly have a better option, and I was not going to go with Shaba once again. So I think the team's pretty good. The carries, especially with the Neeks and Netherrows, are pretty good. And obviously there's Shinku. But like... I'm still concerned for this top side with Jester and Dilgod. Jester is a veteran. I think he can hit himself with Dilgod. I just don't know how it's going to do. The power rankings for this season have us in first place, but first place really doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Power rankings are kind of irrelevant at the start of the season, the preseason ones anyway. At the end of the season, I think it's a good story to tell, but as of right now, it doesn't really help us actually win any games but yeah last year you had the 2021 your uh your champions were if i could find out where the heck pandar is from the 207 shock yes okay so the 207 shock won the last year i don't know why i did that but yeah the 207 shock won the championship last year their second title of the series as uh, Knight won, I think, his second MVP of the series. Maybe not. Oh, he won Rookie of the Year. Okay, so that's where the 2019 Rookie of the Year was. I see. But yeah, Knight has established himself as a really good AD carry and Paladin. But regardless, SIG just needs to win. And we need to get back to the playoffs. We, you know, we did pretty good. Uh, not Paladin Kings. Uh, we did pretty good in 2019, 13-9, making the first round. But ever since then, back down we go, as the curse has remained very much in effect. So let's see if we can get to the playoffs this season. As we look at this, my one expectation for the season is pretty much going to be playoffs. I think we have the roster for it, and the game thinks we have the roster for it, so hopefully we can do that. But the question for some of these other teams, how does the 207 Shock perform, you know, after after winning the title? You know, DJ Rocker Daniel, the number one prospect from the first ever draft class, has a title now. You know, Shane, you know, how does this team bounce back after that? Also in the power rankings, Paladin's number two. They've been up there for a while. Can Paladin finally win its second championship? You know, having arguably one of the best players of all time in Knight. And obviously Venus, who's still a very capable top lane. But Paladin's roster hasn't changed a whole bunch, and they still haven't succeeded. And the team that I'm looking at to see how they do this year is the Imperium Aces. Obviously with Moon left, I always want to see how good he, he does. But Aquaman soon. Former player, Shaba, everyone knows him. Changing scenery now. And how well can he do on the Avery Maces in his first, you know, year on there? As well as them having a new bot lane with Tima and Eric Yudi. Uh, both of them, obviously, Tima is a rookie, and this will be Eric Yudi's first season starting. Both of them are in contention for Rookie of the Year. And we'll see how it goes. Let's go ahead and get the season underway. Well, it is a very, very different year than usual for 
SIG as we sit at the top of the standings, 8-3 and three record, tied with Jade Crown Gaming of all teams, with as the number one seed, two-time champions Quantum at the bottom, defending champion Sue Seven Shock only at four and six and eight. And this season has certainly been a surprise so far to me anyway. Best player on the team right now, Nether Rose in the mid lane with a 6 KDA. Phoenix and Shinfu have done really well. Jester has been the worst performing player, and he is the worst overall player. But it looks like Dilgod is having a, a big bounce back season from last year. And he's actually showing that he is better than Shaba, who currently sits on the 6 and 4 Imperium Aces. With a 3.4 KDA, worst on the team, as he's just kind of being dragged along by the aces so far. As uh, they're doing decent, but they're not, you know, what's it called? They're not uh, crushing the season. If the playoffs started now, we'd be first place. Let's see if that holds up through the rest of the season. Well, SI could not finish in first place, but they do make the playoffs once again as they will be the fourth seed with a 13-9 and nine record. Since this actually matters now, I want to look at the schedule and see how the season progressed. Because obviously we were really good to start the season 8-3, and three, but we had a you know, four-game loss streak or well, after, we, after I checked out off the check-in. Three game loss streak, we beat Excalibur, then a two game loss streak, and wrote a nice four game win streak heading into the playoffs before losing two defending champions in 207 Shock, the team we will face in the quarterfinals. So, here is how SID finished the season. Nether Rose did finish with a 6 KDA, Shinfu slightly worse with a 4.5 KDA, Dilgod definitely cooled down, only finished with a 4.8 lowest on the team. But you know what? It's still a really, really good season regardless. <laughs> you know, for the team. I'm not looking for astronomically high KDAs or even an MVP. I'm just looking for a team that can make the playoffs every year and at least contend for the title. Speaking of playoffs, we will face off against the defending champions, the 207 Shock, who went 12 and 9, or sorry, 12 and 10, and made the first round. With Fictivi in the top lane, Shane in the jungle, Shone in mid, Rocker at 80 carry, and Pandar, a finals MVP from last year, at support. If you look at the power rankings, we are the number two. Not that, you know, power rankings are generally good, but Crystal and Paladin, anyway, have finished first and second. Both of them are in the top three in the power rankings. And apparently we are, uh, you know, for second, but as far as tower differential goes, you can see how much better it is for the good teams and the bad teams. No one had an astronomically high tower differential. I'd say the top four having one or more is better. And like obviously everyone here kind of mediocre, and then the two bad teams at the bottom, Primal and Excalibur, you know, with neg uh, with negative two. So it's not too shocking. But speaking of shocking, let's see if we can take down the 207 shock to win our first playoff series. We do win game one. I'm going to go through the game log for some of these. Just because it's interesting. Dilgod, 7, 1, and 9 on Ramus. Shinku, 0, 3, and 14 on Nico. As a Shone's Talon could not carry a 207 shock in this game. Game two also goes to SIG. We're one game away. As uh, once again, Dilgai doing good this time on Trundle, but it was mainly Jester's top lane Nautilus that uh, managed to rack up the kills in this game 7 3 and 7. Netherrose Kiana also did pretty good. We're one game away from eliminating the defending champion. We will not, however, eliminate them in Game 3, as we lose to the 207 Shock here. 
despite Dilgad getting off to a decently good KDA on Vi. He could not end up stopping Shone's Diana, as well as Rocker's Misfortune. And Vanar's Fiddlesticks just utterly obliterated us. We bounce back and win game three. We cannot, and now it is game five. That's player ratings. Game five against the defending champs. Shone did not die on Kiana 506. Despite Venix's 6 2 and 2, with Vilios and Jester 6 2 and 2 on Garen, we still lost the game. So it all comes down to this game five against the defending champs. Can we advance to the semifinal to take on Crystal? We do not. SIG gets reverse swept by the 207 Shock. Dilgod 0 and 5 on Ramus. In other words, 1 and 6 on Karma. Shane didn't die on Vi. Shoney didn't die on Fiddlesticks. In fact, Pandar and Fictivi are the only guys who died in that game. And Pandar only died once on the Malachi support. So, unfortunately, SI Gaming will not be advanced to the semifinals. And they're still held winless in total playoff series. But we got our first playoff win. It'll be Crystal vs. 207 Shock and... The Imperium Aces managed to take down Jade Crown, as they'll face off against Paladin. As we sim through their series, the Imperium Aces sweep Paladin. Shaba leaves the team and makes the finals, along with Tima and Eric Beauty. <laughs> Aquaman soon also there. And who will face them? Crystal or the 207 Shock? It will be Crystal. So it will be 15 and 7 first seeded crystal with Scaly, Rune, Blue Penguin, Tornado, and Quebec. Taking on the Imperium Aces with Rune Leffa, Shaba, Aqua Monsoon, Tima, and Eric Beauty. So regardless of what happens, a former SIG player will win a title. Whether it be Shaba or Aqua Monsoon on the Imperium Aces or Tornado on Crystal. Let's see who wins. Crystal takes game one. Imperium Aces take game two. The Aces take game three. And from sixth seed to champions, the Imperium Aces take it. And surprisingly, Nether Rose actually won MVP with his six KDA. Phoenix was also in the All League first team, Dilgod All League third team, Jester All League second team. So this means Shinku was the only guy who did not get onto an All League team. As you see, some very, very notable retirements. Sani is gone, Shane has retired, Exceller from Jade Crown, Duelant from Primal Gaming, Fictivi from the 207 Shock, Andy from Paladin, Duke, uh, former number one. Overall Prospect has retired. Home Rookie of the Year Ollivander is retired. Pandar is gone as well. Fiona. Scaly from the Champions Crystal. Not Champions. From the Runner Ups Crystal. So, yeah, plenty of uh, holes to fill. Day retires even from Paladin. So, a lot of holes to fill for this season. So, just to run this down, your All League teams uh, Nether Rose, Sandy, Muslatar, Venix, and Exceller were your first team. Bokrans, Type 0, Cole, Knight, and Jester were your second team. Dilgod, Scaleaf, Miker, Moonlefa, and Zyvi were your third team. For league leaders, like I said, D has some representation here. Type 0 led the league in kills with 4.7. Netherrose led the league in KDA, obviously, with 6. Shinku led the league in assists at 12.1. And Benix led the league in CS at 35. 353.3 and your rookie of the year as decided by the game is Isaiah Blue Penguin Levitt on Crystal. So SIG it's tied for their best year yet. We'll say that. But it certainly, you know, felt like it has been the best season. You know, we had a legitimate chance to not only sweep the defending champions but advance to the semifinals 
and unfortunately we did not. And this is a pretty pretty darn big year because most of our players are expiring save Shinpu on the starting roster. Now, we did not advance in the playoffs, but I don't think I really want to change anything. Why does it say Vinique's refused to sign with me? There we go. Uh, and if you're wondering, yes, I did change the option to basically say he, he has to be able to negotiate with me. The reason is because this series, this game is hard already. I'm not, you know, trying to make the game any harder. So basically, I can sign any player unless we win a championship. Then I cannot re-sign anyone that is a free agent that season. Now, to remedy this, we're only going to sign Denise to a two-year contract, not a one-year contract. We will sign Nether Rose to a three-year contract, though, definitely. I want to see what Dilgod does next season, so I do want to sign him to a one-year contract. But I think I'm going to let Jester and Hyperial a free agency. So we're going to be looking for a new top player. So here is your free agency class. Your top player is, Dr is James Dream Kalash. There's also Blackjaw in the mid lane. Also, Jester is your third best free agent and pretty much the best guy in the top lane. Uh, but considering I let him hit free agency already, I think we're just going to let him sit there. Uh, yeah, pretty much outside of those players, Beyonce uh, as well. I don't think anyone else has played in the league. I did not show the draft class, but I honestly don't think people are watching this far in the video. So who really cares if I show you the draft class, right? I don't make anything super overpowered. But anyway, so obviously what this team needs is a, is a couple new top players, and that's really about it. So let's go see what we can find in the top lane. Here's every single top laner that's available. So first, I think we're going to sign Mark DeLong, Chaos Wick, just to be the developmental top laner. And obviously we're not going to sign Jester, although he'd be the perfect complement, you know, to a player of that stature. Stature, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, we're going to sign Zeus Andrew to the roster to be our potential starting top lane. So we kind of need Chaos Wick to jump up, unless, you know, we, we don't want to... Uh, Unless we don't want to be str uh, straddled with a very bad top laner on a very, very good team, in my opinion. But let's see how the rest of free agency ends out and see what our team looks like to start the year. So here is the free agency, or well, the free agents after uh, the offseason ended. Beyonce actually leads former rookie of the year. From uh, Excalibur actually leads uh, that that list as it would be. If you go look at some off-season uh, teams that make some moves, Quantum signed top prospect as a number one prospect, Warwam, in the jungle for this season. He replaces Dream, who went on to Primal Gaming to uh, join Jam Jam and Yuto. The Imperium Aces also made moves, signing Blackjaw in the mid lane for a now benched Aqua Monsoon. The 207 Shocks' big move this season was signing Jeremy Mohinder Murphy in At the Jungle. And the defending champs, no real roster moves. They signed Chrono Sound, D Bar, and JJ to their academy team. But they have benched Tornado in favor of LaShawn Bluffburn DeLong. Also, forgot to mention this, Quebec, he was on the team last season, and he did start. So, <laughs> I don't know why it says Legacy Sleeper, that's a bug. But yeah, Quebec did start <laughs> for uh, Crystal in that last season, so he is there. <laughs> he was also in the finals. I just forgot, to, I didn't mention, I didn't see him. Yeah, I didn't see him. But other than that, that is all the moves. Here is our roster as Chaos Wick is indeed our top player, or our, our top laner, I should say, not our top player by far. 
absolutely not. But the team looks more solid than ever with Chaos Wick in the top lane now. Bill God, he did not jump up past 70, but I'm still now, I'm more confident in his play after this season. And uh, hopefully we'll have a, a, a much better than a one round, a first round playoff exit for SID this next season. As in the power rankings, we are number one with an actually decent MMR. But that will be it for this episode. My name is Elgin Trade. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.